As we look forward to the future, there's going to be tremendous need for new energy sources. And Fusion is, uh, holds tremendous promise for doing that. Fusion holds the promise of limitless energy uh, without greenhouse gases and without long-lived nuclear waste. It's a safe and it can be placed in places close to cities that are going to need enormous amounts of electricity in the future. The work that we do here will have direct impact on uh, the environment, on the global economy, on the energy industry, and it, it really provides a reason um, for us to come in every day and to be collaborative and, and, um, and work hard. There's a, a drive, a motivational driver. General Atomics operates D3D for Fusion Energy Science Division of the Office of Science as a user facility of the Department of Energy. It is a collaborative program. Uh, that funding flows both to General Atomics, but it also flows to many universities and national labs directly to fund their research so they can come here and do compelling and interesting science here on D3D. The leading device in the world right now for doing magnetic confinement fusion is the tokamak and we have a tokamak here. This is the largest tokamak facility in the United States. And it's basically a donut shaped chamber with magnetic fields that go around both the long way around the donut and the short way around the donut. And when I make a plasma, I can actually control where it goes with magnetic fields. And for the most part, that confines the particles and energy. Starting the sequence for the next test shot. D3D is a very flexible machine and it's used that flexibility to develop new plasma configurations. So for example, one particular thing was, was to develop ways to access very high plasma pressure and plasmas that can sustain themselves indefinitely, which is what you need to do in a reactor. More recently, D3D has been working on critical physics for the reactor that's being built in Europe called ITER, where we've been addressing how to operate ITER, how to suppress heat burst instabilities on ITER, how to quench the plasma safely. So we're preparing a lot of the physics basis for this reactor, which will be starting to operate within the next 10 years. Much of the research we do here at D3D, and in particular in my area of plasma research interactions, has important implications for ITER. For example, because we have the ability on D3D to expose small material samples, such as tungsten, to ITER level diverter heat fluxes, we can actually help to test the material wall components that will actually be installed in ITER. And going forward, we can actually help ITER to predict what will happen to these components before they have to install them in the machine. Part of my job is to uh, design and run experiments to develop physics models and um, to do data analysis to try and develop plasma physics regimes that are compatible with future reactors. Um, for instance, there's a plasma instability called an ELM that spews particles and heat onto the wall of the reactor, making it unsustainable for long-term operation. What my team and I are trying to do is develop a plasma scenario that leverages turbulence in the edge of the plasma to mitigate the impact of heat and particles on the wall so that we can have long pulse operation. What we're trying to do on D3D uh, with ETA is figure out how we can bring ETA up and hit the performance goals and maybe even exceed those performance goals in the best way it can. So we are simulating the regimes on, of ETA on D3D and trying out the techniques and learning how to optimize and use those techniques and all the tools that ETA will have. We will figure out how to use those on D3D and develop the scientific basis so we can simulate and interpret ETA. And we work with international partners and we collaborate with the ETA team in identifying the research to prepare for ETA. The tokamak configuration has a current running around the long way in the torus, in the plasma. In ETA that'll be about 15 million amps. So the simplest way and the way that we've usually done that in tokamaks is by making the tokamak part of a transformer. So the primary of the transformer is what we call the central solenoid. It's just a coil that goes up through the center of the donut and we drive current in that and that drives current in the plasma. So in ITER, this central solenoid is going to be about 60 feet tall and it's going to be the strongest superconducting electromagnet ever built in the world. And this electromagnet is actually being built by General Atomics in a facility in Poway about 20 miles from here. 
General Atomics is great. It's a very highly collaborative environment. They welcome scientists from other national laboratories and universities. They sponsor undergraduate programs and we're able to bring young, bright scientists in, teach them about fusion plasma physics, and also get some experience in educating the next generation of physicists. It's a really great time to be a young scientist in fusion uh, because there is a real possibility that younger early career scientists will have the opportunity to not only witness but actually contribute to, to meeting some of the major milestones in fusion like net energy gain and long pulse operation. We potentially have the opportunity to work on a burning plasma experiment like ITER or other conceptual designs that are out there right now during our careers, which is something that not many people in the generations behind us have been able to say.